Hi, this is Catherine from Content Accelerators, and I am excited to introduce you to Digital Sticker Templates Volume 2 for Affinity Designer. It's hard to believe, but it's been over a year now since uh, Volume 1 was released, and I decided it was time to add to the sticker styles that you can use. So uh, this is an all new set of over 75 new designs, and I've got them organized in a single Affinity Designer uh, file on five different artboards. And everything is nicely labeled so you can find things. Uh, but let's just take a quick peek. We've got the first page is mostly uh, different icons. Um, so reminders for appointments, um, ideas, shopping, car related things, fitness, dentist and doctor, gifts and birthdays, as well as some divider tabs and a file folder and an open book, um, etc. And so the next one is a theme of different sorts of note taking uh, stickers. And then the third one is just some more functional planner stickers. Volume one was largely functional stickers, kind of like this style. Um, so I thought of a few more little designs that can augment that, um, but I really exhaustively covered that in the first volume. Uh, we've also got some scales for weight tracking. And then the fourth one is all different kinds of banners and ribbons and some washi tape over here. And then the last one is based on the theme of calendars and mood trackers. Okay, so let's take a look at what we can do with this. Uh, so these are largely click and fill. So basically click on uh, any one of them. And with my move tool on, I will select one, go to the fill tool, and I want to uh, affect the fill, so context fill and then type, you can choose solid or any one of these gradients in the next four options or bitmap in order to get a pattern. So if we just wanted to fill the heart, we could leave it on solid, click on the gray spot and let's, uh, let's make it red or maybe even pink, let's make it pink. And so that's all there is to it. And so you can go through, if you wanted to um, affect multiple of these, you could click a bunch of them and pick the same color uh, for all of them at once. And that would make it even faster. Um, I did a lot of tutorials uh, related to volume one. So there's a, a video for volume one. And I also have a free course on digital sticker basics with Affinity Designer, where I show you how I, sh how I set up basic shapes and then fill. So if you are new to this, I suggest that you sign up for that free course and look at the volume one video where I go a little bit more into the click and fill um, using both colors as well as gradients, and then as well how to fill it with a pattern. What I want to show you in this video is some of the more advanced things that you'll find in this volume two sticker pack um, so that you know exactly how to use it. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to highlight a few different stickers uh, that will give you an idea of how to use some of these. So let's start with this flower here. On my move tool, I'm just going to click it and that will bring it up in blue in my layers panel. And I can actually just move the layers over here. And uh, it is already grouped. Everything is grouped, every single sticker, um, because that has allowed me to pre-slice them all. Um, and we'll look at that at the very end. So I'm going to expand it by clicking on the little arrow. And now you can see that I've got the petals that are one layer and so I can click on petals here and then fill so maybe let's make that uh, pink and then the inner circle I can click on that and we'll fill that with a yellow and then when we get to the veins here they are all grouped together so you'd want to expand them out which they already are and then click the top one hold shift and click the bottom one to select all of them we're going to change the color with the uh, fill tool. So fill tool, and this time, uh, because the petals are lines, we are going to um, click stroke, and then we are going to click on our color wheel 
And now let's maybe pick an orange just so that it's obvious that they're different. Okay, so that is how you fill the ones that have a stroke. And um, I'm, I've got most of the ones with a stroke labeled. I'm gonna, before I release this, I'm gonna go back and, and fix this and make sure that it, everything that requires a stroke to be colored instead of a fill is well labeled. Okay, so um, the same thing would apply to this light bulb. If you click on the light bulb and you expand it out, you can see all the different layers that you can um, make different colors. So you could almost make clip art out of some of these as well as digital stickers. Um, and you'd be able to color the filament, these outer rays, the bulb itself, these little threads, as well as the base, all different colors um, because they're all in their individual layers here. And again, if anything uh, is grouped, you just need to expand it out and select everything within the group while holding shift. Um, and then you can color them all together. Again, once you have all of them selected, just go to the fill tool and again, the filament is actually a stroke. So in the fill tool, we're going to go to context stroke, and then we would be able to uh, pick the color for that. Okay, so um, some of these also have effects on it. So this clock, for example, um, has an effect um, on the outer part so that you c it looks a little bit 3D and it also has a little bit of that shine and shadow to it. If you look in the layers panels, anything that has effects applied has this little FX. Uh, it looks like kind of the mathematical function of X symbol from calculus. Um, and so this one has an effect on it. So if you click on the FX, if you ever want to change it or take it off, you could just click on the FX. It'll bring up this window. It'll show you what has been applied because it'll have a check mark there. And if you wanted to make it more of a flat look, you could just take that off and now it is gone. If you wanted to adjust it a little bit, here's all your settings for this particular effect. Um, with this one, I believe also the face of the clock also has a shadow and some bevel on it. So um, again, you could take this completely off and that would get rid of that shadowed look to it. All right, so let's go take a look at a couple other different things that are going on on these. So the file folder um, also uh, has a front and a back, um, and that is so you can have a little bit of this three dimension with some effects, and then also um, you can color this one just a little bit darker. So the way I would approach that personally is I would click on the front of the folder, and I would go ahead and pick my fill. So let's make it like a folder color, let's say like that. And then I would click on the back of the folder and I would go into the fill again and into swatches and under my recents you'll find that same color but then I can go back to the color wheel and I can just darken that same color up just a little bit so that's how I would approach filling that one so moving on to the next one um, again the phone has uh, some effects on it you can see it makes it look like uh, it's almost got a plastic case on it this is um, a little fold with a shadow on it so we'll click on it so that it will highlight in the layers here and uh, I have made those a uh, separate shape so that you can again color it differently so you could color your main note uh, we can make it like an orange sticky note let's uh, switch it so that it's the fill and then you could highlight the shadow and you could fill it that same color but then go to your color wheel and just darken it up a little bit so that it's got a shadow to it um, these some of these uh, some of the arrows and hearts here as well as some of these 
um, use brushes to give it a little bit more of a hand-drawn look. So if you want to change the grid or the dots or the lines on any of these, uh, they are using brushes, uh, which you will only find in Designer and Photo. Uh, they are not in Publisher, um, but you can go to the group and then find the stroke and uh, actually we need to open the brushes window. So view, studio, brushes, and then you will be able to change it to different brushes if you want. Obviously we don't want that. So we'll just get rid of that. And I don't think there's anything unusual here. Um, these that have the little outlines in them, the borders, and the backgrounds are also separate. Um, so the background needs a fill and then the border needs to have a stroke. And again, uh, by the time I release these, these will be further labeled. Um, also in the ribbons, um, I have colored them different shades of gray so you can kind of tell where shadows are supposed to be. Same sort of thing that we did with the post-it note. Um, in making and the file folder in making the shadowed parts just a little bit darker shade of whatever color you select for the main thing. These have little shadow shapes on them. This has a shadow. These have a shadow. This one does. Um, this one here, this little uh, squiggly banner, um, it has actually three parts. It's got the tails and then it's also got this little shadow here kind of underneath the curve. So there's actually probably three shades that I would do with that one. And then also this one down here and all three of these, um, their shadow, if you want to, you could actually just go into the layer there for that. And if you wanted to make this look more like a flat lay sticker, you could just hide it by unchecking that layer. And now it just looks like a flat lay sticker. So you can get rid of that little bend and the shadow on that. And then finally, uh, the mood trackers. So if you click on any one of these faces, we can find them in the layers. I have left the mouth and the eyes separately if you want to color them differently. However, if you wanted to just color all the parts of the face together, you could expand out the eyes and then uh, with control or command held, you can click both of the eyeballs and the mouth, and then you would be able to go into your swatches and we can give them maybe a blue face. So that is uh, the basics of how you can work with this. So like I said, the, the new things that are expanded upon from the last set is we've got more stickers that have some more complicated things like shadows and embossing and 3D elements, um, which are all, all make it nice and customizable. Um, so I consider this more of an intermediate set, whereas the first one was more a beginner set. Uh, so uh, again, take a look at the videos if you are new to these click and fill products of mine. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me through my website. I'd be happy to assist you or answer any sort of pre-sales questions. Thank you so much for watching.